What is going on? It is Harry Potter coming back at you with another video. And today we're going to be continuing this three round mock draft with day number two. That's rounds two and three. If you guys are new, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is actually Alex. I just have the glasses that make me look like Harry Potter or John Lennon because, well, I can't find the ones that make me look slightly less, but still like Harry Potter and John Legend. But let's get on into this. Blow my face to my board. Yeah, it's going to irritate some of you, but you know what? I owe you transparency. And this is kind of a good blend of what I'm going to be doing. We're going to review all the picks, but I do want to say before the video starts, because I always end up forgetting to say it, that we have a couple players that we are not considering this mock draft because I consider them to be returning. Um, most of the time, they're just juniors who have season ending injuries. Ben Morrison is one of them. And then I believe the only other one that I've thought about is um, Harold Perkins. So keep that in mind, but let's review the first round. I'll let you guys read, but we'll just discuss the trades that happened and uh, continue from there. So first off, we had the New York uh, Giants moving up with New Orleans to get their quarterback of the future. Then we had the Raiders also make a small jump up as well. Uh, Raiders and the Panthers ended up actually having a kind of a heavy pick switch, which is pretty cool. But uh, of course, that ended up resulting in Shadur Sanders going to Vegas. Uh, and got some heat right here for Ashton Genty at pick five. Feel free to go back to the first round. And again, you're going to experience it a lot better when you get to actually watch the video. But this is basically for both you and me. Uh, but of course, Carolina moved back and ended up getting Abdul Carter. But they did end up making a move at the end of the first. Same thing with the Saints. So both of the teams that moved back at the beginning moved up as well at the end. So stay tuned for that. Uh, we had Indianapolis trade back with San Francisco and Cincinnati with Chicago. I ended up titling the video Massive Moves for a reason. There was a lot of really big ones, and honestly, I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. Of course, the result of the Niners trade was that this is not Fentral Cypress. It is actually Azariah Thomas, my number 12 overall player. Um, I do actually have to go... Do I have to go back? I'm forgetting. Oh, yes. So for the Rams placeholder, it's not Jordan Hancock. is my number 18 player on my board currently, and Davidson Igbenosin. So I just wanted to put that in there as well because PFF, I've said it a lot, does not update their board remotely enough to reflect what actually is draftable. And it bothers me, but at the end of the day, I don't think there's a single other mock draft simulator that comes remotely close to the quality and at least the design. So it is what it is. But continuing on, we ended up having um, the Saints moved back up to jump the Eagles to select a right tackle of the future in Cam Williams. And then we have Minnesota trade down and acquire a couple later picks and have the Panthers move up and select Drew Alar. And now we are back. So, um, yeah, just there you go. You got that quick little recap. I tried to adjust the trades to be able to not like what actually happened in the video, but I realized the Devontae Adams trade had yet to be processed in this, and that really bothers the hell out of me that PFF does, hasn't done anything about the Marshawn Lattimore trade, the Jonathan Mingo, any of those trades. So anything from trade deadline day, not already in there. And then it wasn't even the Devontae Adams trade or the Jahan Dotson trade that has been updated. So I tried to do that myself. If I slipped up on something, I tried to do Amari Cooper as well. If I slipped on something, feel free to call it out. I apologize if I ended up missing something, but at the end of the day, it really is an indictment on PFF for not staying up to date. And again, it's, um, we're hopefully going to be transitioning to a new simulator soon. I'll leave it there. Something in the works. We'll get it going. Pick number 33 though, for the New England Patriots, we drafted Travis Hunter in the first round. I think left tackle is the next position to draft. And luckily for us, we have two great talents here in Josh Connerly and Jack Nelson. Jack Nelson is the only true left tackle that I see left on the board. No pun intended. So we are going to take him for the Patriots. So now you have yourself a star weapon and a star left tackle, 6'7", 312. He's a guy who I have a lot of faith in as well. He was one of my top guys coming into the year. At number 34 for the Jacksonville Jaguars, we took Will Johnson in the first. Uh, I think this is the proper opportunity to select a top-end offensive lineman that I was just debating between for the Patriots. Not really debating, but at least mentioning. That is Josh Connerly Jr. Uh, he's top 20 on a lot of people's boards. I'm probably going to be getting there with him because those high-level reps are beautiful. The consistency wavers a little bit but you know there's not many tackles that really do have the lockdown reps that josh connerly does so i'm excited to see what he can do at the next level 
At number 35 for the Texans, we ended up actually pushing up a lot. We moved up in the second, we moved up in the third, and we just, all that just for moving back in the first. And I think that's good for both teams, New Orleans as well as the Texans, because I wanted to get a guard in the first place, and Tyler Booker is still here. We essentially moved up and got a ton of draft capital for free, and I think that's great. For the Bears at 36, uh, this was via a move up with, or was it a move up with Carolina? Hold up. What is this? Um, oh, this is Carolina's pick. I'm so dumb. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of a move back with Carolina uh, just a little bit ago, a couple years ago, as a matter of fact. But the Bears are here at 36. We moved up for Arianti Urzuri. I think that was a certainly good move. And I'm trying to see, like, we ended up moving back or moving up with Cincinnati in the first. And we ended up giving that second, second round pick that we were supposed to have and ended up getting a third rounder out of it. So we ended up reshifting our board as well. I think that's smart because we got Urzri, who's going to be a top end offensive lineman. And now we can look at the best player available. At this point, I really think Emeka Abuka is a dark horse pick because he's going to fit perfectly into Keenan Allen's role in the slot, bigger receiver as well. I think it's a one to one switch. And I haven't done Emeka Abuka to the Bears. Let's roll with that. I mean, I think that's a great pickup. You got Ursary and Abuka. I mean, you don't need much more to be able to truly compete. And yeah, you can get an extra offensive lineman, but we do have two third round picks for that. At 37 for the Browns, uh, we ended up getting Ashen Genty in the first, and this is the perfect opportunity to be able to get a developmental guy. Unfortunately, when Deshaun comes back next year, there's too much money on the line to basically have him be, you know, useless. Um, so there's three positions to look at. There's quarterback, there's wide receiver, and there's left tackle. Left tackle, if you could promise me Wyatt Milam could play there, I'd take him in a heartbeat. I don't think that's the case. I honestly think that Wyatt Milam is going to be a guard, and that's where we have to leave that. Um, I do think that quarterback like Jalen Milrow, who has the athleticism, essentially can play at the same level as Deshaun Watson, but on a much cheaper contract, might be the correct move. And I think there's just, it's very difficult to convince me that this is not something that you can pass up on. So we'll be going after Jalen Milrow here at 37. So Ashton Genty, Jalen Milrow, you guys know I love that combination. I've done it for the Raiders and for the Browns whenever I have drafted Genty for the team the first. Pick number 38 for the Minnesota Vikings. We traded back, got an extra couple fourth round picks, which this team definitely needs. And uh, we could trade back from here as well. I think the three positions mentioned as needs here are actually really, really solid positions um, to, to look at because interior offensive line, I know that you guys have certainly mentioned it. I also do believe that um, defensive interior is another position to target. And you got Dion Walker here. You got Ty League Williams. It's very hard to say no when you have those two, including Derek, not even including Derek Harmon, just staring at you right in the face. And again, at 97, do I trust that we could potentially get a good guard? I actually kind of do. So I'd prefer to go after a top end defensive interior talent here, like Dion Walker or Tyleek Williams. Again, Derek Harmon in there as well, over being able to just go after another position at this point. And I think that I have to go, I'll go with my gut. I'm going to go after the high floor guy in Tyleek Williams here. I think you just got to get a position right. And Tyleek Williams is a real quality player. And at 38, it's great value in my opinion. At pick number 39 for the Houston Texans, we moved back, ended up getting some free pickage by moving up. And I love that for us. I also think this is a prime opportunity to get two different positions, defensive interior and defensive back. Defensive back wise, Think about the potential of Nick Eamon Worry at 6'3", 227. Kind of nice. But I also know at 67, I still will be able to be in striking range of a Ransom, a Watts, a Nwankpa, a Saab. I think that that is going to be far better than the uh, what we'll get at defense interior in the third round. Let's not overthink this. Two really good options, and probably the next team that I take a defensive interior for would get the leftover of this. Again, different styles of player, 305 pounds versus 345. But both of them bring that pass rushing upside. And Dion is just a little bit more raw, in my opinion, than Derek Harmon. But I also trust that um, the coaching staff for Houston will certainly be able to make that happen. So uh, honestly, pretty damn good move so far. Booker and Walker uh, for the Texans just being able to build up high quality players all around. At number 40 for the Dolphins, we ended up going Mason Graham in the first. 
I think that this is a great opportunity to get Wyatt Milam here in the second. Quality guy who has left tackle experience. has done a phenomenal job this year. I'll let you guys see what his stats are doing right now. Zero pressures on the year, first off. Great job for him. But, you know, he's just someone who's extremely consistent. Probably has guard length arms. So you're going to have him at guard. If you need him to play tackle, you have someone who has experience there. And I really like how that ended up falling for the Dolphins. At 41 for the Titans, we end up going Will Campbell and uh, in the first. And that's because, simply put, that right side of the offensive line is not great. I assume that if Will Campbell cannot handle, like, at the NFL level, like, the length issue, which he's going to be between 32 and 33-inch arms. Tackles have done it. But this team might value arm length a little bit more than maybe I give it credit for. And so he might end up having to go the Skaronsky route. But I honestly think he's going to have an even better career than Peter Skaronsky, who I did love. So if he goes that route. So at number 41, we have to look at quarterback. And there's some good options here. Miller Moss is not going to be coming out in this. So I'm just going to put that out there as well. I don't think people are going to be too surprised. But it is kind of Garrett Nussmeyer as the potential option. Or we can look at receiver. And receiver, there's a lot of really good options. But we also are really pick deprived. And we have these fourth round picks. I think this is a great opportunity to move back and leverage one of our picks with a team that maybe has a couple third round picks and basically be able to flip our board so we actually have a little better draft capital because there's a lot of good receiver options. And I don't really feel the need to really push our luck and kind of lose out on getting a third round pick. So who's there to move up for? Siobhan Revell is absolutely on the table for a lot of teams to move up for. Um, you got backs like Omari and Hampton, Jonah Coleman as well, but you also have top tier edge rushers here. And technically the Titans are certainly in the market for an edge rusher. I don't think that's off the table, but again, I really need to move back and be able to flip some picks here. And I'm looking at a team like the Raiders for sure as a team that I would love to see get aggressive here because they have that Devontae Adams trade pick. By the way, that could become a second, by the way. Just remember that. I didn't fully remember that, and I actually have a tab open that I was making sure I understood the trade details. I thought it was a fourth conditional third, but it's actually a, a third that can be up to a second. But I just don't see them being um, in the race for that. The Bengals... I do see them being a good com uh, contender here for like getting a little bit excited with both of their second round picks. You could see them trying to be able to flip the board a little bit, but the Titans also don't have very much to offer in that regard. Um, I mean, honestly, we're we're kind of lockstep here. There's not many teams that actually have enough draft capital for us to steal that third rounder. Is there like are there is there a team that's desperate for a boundary corner? I see the Niners, but Beside that, I don't really see a team that's like over overwhelmingly trying to push. Is there a team desperate for a wide receiver one? Kind of us. So I don't really see that. Um, honestly, this is actually a pretty stiff area for competition. I could actually see the Bengals trying to make a quick move up. But again, they don't have that third round pick anymore because we gave it to the Bears. It's a bad spot to be in. Bottom line, bad spot to be in. Um, I could see the Niners still getting aggressive and moving up again, but not a good spot, man. Not a good spot. I don't think that we're going to have any buyers. So we're going to go after the best player available. We're actually going to go after Alec Iomainer here. Let's just solve the wide receiver problem. Let's get it out of the way. We got our tackle. We got our receiver. Don't force a need if you don't have to. Garrett Nussmeyer certainly has his potential, but I also think that there has his respective question marks and it doesn't rule us out from trading up with those two fourth round picks i pick number 42 for the new york jets uh you know quarterback with garrett nussmeyer would not be a bad choice for this specific team because you have someone who can mentor him properly but in the first round what did we go after we went after malachi starks and i want to be able to call this out um i'm calling myself out you guys have done a great job on being able to correct me on this it was so i bring up like the fact that new york in the past has drafted jamal adams as high as sixth you guys did an excellent job being a respectful, but be very insightful on the fact that that's pre Douglas era. That's on me. So it actually, the logic doesn't make very much sense there. You guys were talking about how I'm trying to remember. I think it might've been a low heat Gilman that you guys ended up saying pretty much walk when he was worth nothing, even though he was a homegrown talent and did a great job. So um, I will say that going forward, we'll be ignoring 
Malachi Starks in the for your team in the first. But I do want to give you guys a shout out because you guys do deserve it. Being able to hold me accountable is exactly how we can make the show better. But defensive interior wise, you guys need some help. And let's fix it with some Derek Harmon power. I love it. Uh, could have went Garrett Nussmeyer again, but I really just wanted to emphasize going after those positions of big need with great guys of great value. Derek Harmon is perfect for that. At 43 for the Dallas Cowboys, I got a little bit of heat in the first round for going after Kenneth Grant. And that's okay. I understood that was going to be what it could have been. I know that running back is a position we should target, but once again, we do have pick 75, and this is a very, very good um, a very good running back class. And to be fair, if we ended up passing on Kenneth Grant, and let's just say you got taken by another team, we'd be stuck looking at TJ Sanders here in the second rather than, you know, looking at a different position of need. One of those is wide receiver. Again, you spent so much draft capital on Jonathan Mingo, and don't even get me started about that, that I do worry that there's not really a role that a wide receiver at this point is going to fulfill. It sounds horrible, but that's just kind of the case. Um, I actually think we'll go running back here. And you got Quinshawn. Quinshawn's a great back. He's been dealing with some health issues, though. He has. And he's been getting so, like heavily, heavily reduced yards per attempt. Like talking about in the, the two to three yard range. So he's certainly not healthy right now. And I'm hoping he bounces back. But there's a player that I want to really mention here. And it's Jonah Coleman. You talk about yards per attempt, and it's like pretty much the same, but he's been extremely consistent. And Washington's offensive line is not that good. I ended up posting about him a couple of times on my Twitter page. Feel free to go check that out. Um, you just go through the link tree. It's two clicks away from getting there, but you guys can see what I said about him. I honestly think he's one of those few backs that I would be willing to take here in the second, even though I ended up saying we should go from the third. Like, I just think I'm going to be taking him way before 75. So I think that you need to go after the best back available. I pick number 44 for the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, I don't want to be that dick who ends up taking Nick even worry again. I just can't do it to you guys. I need to think of something else. And I always think of the linebacker and I'm like, oh, this is a groundbreaking idea. You know what? This is a proper opportunity to go after that second edge rusher. You got Princely Umami Ellen available. Don't overthink it. Princely Umami Ellen is kind of bringing that physicality that, you know, you get the finesse essentially with Leatu Latu. Princely Umami Ellen has that finesse, but he uses, he needs to unlock that power a little bit more because I think that honestly is a little bit even more valuable than the skill set he brings currently. At 45 for the Bengals, uh, we got 45 and 50. You got to remember that. Uh, we ended up moving back in the first, selecting Walter Nolan. Got some defensive interior gusto, so to speak. I don't think that wide receiver with Jalen Rawls is out of the question because we've dealt with some issues with Jermaine Burton personality-wise. I ended up dropping him significantly, not because of his talent last year, but because he, the effort on his routes was atrocious. Like It genuinely bothered me because I was a big uh, Burton guy. He was a top 32 player for me in terms of talent. And then I just kept watching him be absolutely lazy on the field. And I was praying to God I was wrong. It doesn't look like I am. I mean, the dude's skipping um, practice on Saturdays and such. Uh, it does leave you open to where if you want to go Jalen Royals here, I don't blame you. But that being said, I think we need to leverage this opportunity to be able to give a massive middle finger to a dream pick for the 49ers. And that is Siobhan Revell. Get yourself a top tier boundary corner who's coming off an ACL tear and allow him to be able to grow and develop in a real quality system. At 46 for the Seahawks, um, this is where I'm going to go Nick Eamon Worry. I mean, the, you guys ended up going after a tackle in the first with uh, Josh Simmons, which I think is excellent. But Nick Eamon Worry, giving your defensive coordinator and head coach their top tier safety, like their guy at 6'3", 227, probably in the four threes. I don't think you can ignore that too much. I've tried to push him into the first round as well. And I don't think that's out of the question. That wouldn't be out of the blue if it ended up happening. I'd be like, oh, shit. But it would be more like, oh, cool. Then, um, oh, wow, that's a reach. So Nicky Minwari, even after evaluation, he is my number 20 player on my board. Actually, Denzel Burke's been regraded, and he is not 76.5. I'll just tell you that. Uh, he is not my number 19 player. So Nicky Minwari right now is my number 19 player. Pick number 47 for the Las Vegas Raiders. We ended up having that massive pick swap uh, via that trade back or did we do a trade up or trade back? I think we did a trade back. Do we do it? I'm tripping balls. Um, no, we did a trade up with Carolina. So we got pretty much all of Carolina's picks. Technically this would have been a good team to move up with to, uh, 
to the Titans pick, but I just didn't really see it as super valuable. You got Shadur Sanders on the squad. At this point, you're kind of playing with house money because, again, you didn't really lose much draft capital. And you guys have done an excellent job of coaching me about how your franchise doesn't value running back. Like, I, I get that. And I'm going to respect that as much as possible. I do see that both of your linebackers are up for contract this year. And they're, it's about time that we start seeing some of these guys get selected. And I'm looking at higher floor players. Like, you look at Jack Kaiser here. You look at Danny Stutzman. Um, I certainly think these guys could be on the table. But I also kind of think they'll be on the table 70 and 74. And I think you guys know that too. So, looking at other positions, I think you do need to potential, potentially continue throwing at the edge position, I believe Coons is up for a contract. And if Coons is up for a contract and Kennard is on the board, I am absolutely taking Kyle Kennard. At 48 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, ended up taking an edge rusher in James Pierce in round at number one. Here in round number two, damn, I gotta move some of these players. I owe it to you guys. I have been trying to keep cornerbacks a little bit more sneaky in terms of their current position, but that's mainly because I'm probably gonna be doing a corner video in the next week. Spoiler alert. But uh, regardless, for the Buccaneers, tight end's been eviscerated. I think that's, a, I know that you guys ended up actually having a social media post saying Kate, Kate is him, but personally, don't, I don't think Kate is perfect by any means. I love Cade, Cade Otten. He's gotten me a lot of fantasy points, but I do think you can certainly upgrade there if the opportunity presents itself. Uh, I do think a boundary corner still is on the table for you guys. And you got Takeru Davis here, who could be extremely flexible. And I actually like the way your defense utilizes flexibility. I'm actually going to go to Takeru Davis. He's surprisingly climbed up my board, not because he's gotten better, but honestly, because a lot of other corners have gotten worse. And it sucks, but it is what it is. At 49 for the San Francisco 49ers, uh, we are going to be looking primarily at defensive back. Because in the first round, we ended up moving up to select Calvin Banks. Here in the second round, I'm looking pretty heavily at Jadai Barron. He's done an excellent job, and he has a great frame. Um, to me, I, I didn't think of him as highly necessarily as maybe some other people do. Some people say he's a guaranteed second-round pick. I'm not necessarily there just yet, but the flexibility and the quality of play certainly have been extremely elevated from where he was. And so I will allow the Niners to get their guy. At number 50 for the Cincinnati Bengals, again, we ended up going after Siobhan Ravel as well as Walter Nolan. Kind of a killer duo right there. I will look at defensive back as well, however. And, you know, I'm looking at a lot of really quality players here because, you know, Jesse Bates, the absence has been felt. And I think what Geno Stone has on a three-year deal, not necessarily performing at the rate that he should. I also think that running back is a dark horse position. Is this a possible spot for us to move back with the team with a couple thirds? We're talking right here about the Atlanta Falcons. Like the Falcons could try to make a move up. Question is for whom? Uh, but, you know, you do have some teams in here that do have some extra draft capital that certainly could be getting a little bit aggressive. Uh, you look at the Bills as well, but I don't want to give any sort of advantage to a team that I am going to be competing against. Bottom line, I don't really see it. You could talk about a team trying to move up for Garrett Nussmeyer. I mean, there's not many. You could talk about, like, who the hell would I even move up? Because the top four teams have all gotten their QB. So that kind of sucks. Like, the Jets are pretty much eviscerated because, well, we got the Raiders who took their spot. So I don't see anybody moving up. We're going to have to deal with it. So I do think safety and edge are the spots I'm going to look at. Edge-wise, I do think that Jack Sawyer would be actually a pretty good Cincinnati Bengal. Also, it makes sense. You know, he's an Ohio State Buckeye. It fits the bill. But uh, Kevin Winston Jr. would be great. However, I do want someone who has that size and that um, interception capability. And that is Xavier Watts to a T. I mean, this dude is an INT machine. Like, he led the whole entire country in picks last year. So I think I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He even has three picks this year already. This dude's been an absolute interception machine. Get yourself someone who is a ball hawk back there who can compete at a similar level at his ceiling to what you used to have, uh, especially if you want to make a run for the Super Bowl. You need somebody who can end up icing the game on those deep shots. Pause. Pick number 51, we got the Denver Broncos here. Ended up going tight end in round number one with Tyler Warren. Based on how the tight ends ended up being taken in the first, I think that was a good move. Uh, looking at receiver here, 
it's kind of hard to not go from Colorado to Utah and look at Jalen Royals, the after the catch ability, the contested catch ability, and not fall in love. I think this is a home run hit. Um, Jalen Royals is one of my top receivers in my entire board. Where the hell did I put him, by the way? I'm trying to see where I ended up putting the poor guy. Uh, Jalen Royals is probably sitting somewhere around here at 51 overall. And hey, pick 51. Pick number 52 for the Arizona Cardinals took an edge rusher in the first round, Jalen Walker, technically also a um, a linebacker. I am going to look probably at the defensive interior position. It's so boring. I know it's super boring. It's the same thing every time. But, you know, there's areas that the Cardinals need to address. And, you know, bringing Baron Browning on for a short term is not going to address it. My opinion, for the long run, at least. So I think that TJ Sanders is a likely option here. I mean, again, it's someone who's proven this year to take a massive step up. Got to give dudes credit where they can get credit. But of course, you also do know that South Carolina has some other dudes who will be absorbing those double teams the way that TJ Sanders, maybe if he did not have a Dylan Stewart and Kyle Kennard around there, would be soaking up the double teams himself to show us if he can actually handle those uh, that level of responsibility at the NFL level. But uh, TJ is just a little bit small. I think the Cardinals deserve someone who has a little bit better size to him. Uh, safety wise, you guys are doing excellent. DTD, Dadrian Taylor, Demerson to me is going to be a future stud for you. My only question with him was effort because he actually didn't put a ton of effort on his reps there at Tech. But I mean, so far it's looking like Baker and Demerson are going to be a nasty duo for years to come. Um, again, we already addressed that edge rushing position. Linebacker, not going to be addressing that corner. You got some dudes not going to really mess around with that either. So looking at the offense, I do think that you could look at that running back room. You know, Trey has done a solid job this year. Nothing crazy. Uh, wide receiver wise, actually, it's not a bad spot to look at someone like Ty Felton, Ricky White. That could be good after the catch. But the fact that I'm being so indecisive means it's time for a trade down. And we got some quality running backs here. I see the Chargers are right here as well. I don't think that they would be shy of going after a quality running back either. You also talk about the corners as well, which the Chargers will be in on. And I do know that corner is probably my next pick for the Falcons. Are there teams that are looking at corner? I think the Ravens are. You ended up trading for Tredavious White. And I think that that shows some form of desperation. I saw tweets last night talking about how bad the secondary for the Ravens are. And... To be fair, I do think that you guys definitely showed some weaknesses. I also think that technically you could look at the Bills as an offer, as a chance to move up. But uh, let's take a more safe trade down and uh, let's go after the Baltimore Ravens. Why not? The Ravens have a ton of picks as well. So a move like this would probably take 159. You can feel free to adjust it again on your own, but that kind of gives us enough flexibility to where Arizona adds a solid selection where it's going to get some good depth. And then the Ravens can end up moving up again, Ben Morrison off the board to be able to select their next best corner. And I really love Jabbar Muhammad, but I think Quincy Riley has just like the ceiling that you're looking for. Uh, he's a really top tier athlete, former sprinter. And, you know, he knows how to blow up the run plays. He is a difference maker. But I think that I ended up reevaluating him and he stayed roughly around where he was, if I'm not mistaken, which is where the hell do I have Quincy on this? He's somewhere in here, but I still want to give him his flowers. This dude's an absolute stud. And he probably would be the pick for me at 53 for the Chargers if that weren't the case. At 53, though, for the Chargers. I still want to potentially mention Jabbar Muhammad in this equation. I really like him, spoiler alert. But we ended up going after Colson Loveland in round number one, yes? And we did. So I think it is time to also semi-focus on the defensive side of the ball. I just don't know if anybody is really going to be worth it here. You guys have pieced together a solid running back room with a bunch of like relative no-names. And I think it's time to at least get some extra competition excuse me, in there. And I know at 85, we could do that perfectly fine. But Quinchon Judkins, outside of the past couple games where he had this hand surgery, has been the best back outside of Ashton Genty in the country. So I don't think that you can say no to that. Uh, Quinchon is that like that guy who could just have elite vision, and especially with a quality offensive line, I think it's going to be very valuable. At 54 for the Atlanta Falcons. So corner, probably gonna be my next pick. You went after edge in the first. You guys know the deal. And... I mean, looking at the guys available, 
I just am a sucker for Jabbar Muhammad. He's just, uh, the only thing I'd be worried about him is arm length, but this dude is a top 32 player on my board. Um, his grade is up to date, actually. Where he's at right now, the, like other guys are not fully up to date. Jabbar Muhammad is, so he's probably going to be a top 20 player on my board when all is said and done. That dude's an absolute stud. I picked number 55 for the Packers. I could also see them being in the market for a corner. Ended up going after Michael Williams in round number one. Here in round number two, I think this is a team that could be trying to take advantage of a player like Denzel Burke, who is a little bit on the stock down. Well, very much on the stock down. But I also don't really see that as a position that we need to be overly desperate for. I also want to be able to look at someone like Jonas Savania here, who has that instant chemistry with Jordan Morgan, could kick into center as well. I think he slipped a little bit too far, so we're going to be selecting him here. At pick 56 for the Arizona Cardinals, uh, again, it's a team I don't really want to draft for, if I'm just going to be completely blunt. I feel a little bit ignorant at this point, but I feel like TJ Sanders is going to be your best bet. I didn't like 290, but if I ended up getting that extra fourth round pick, I can deal with it, and then we could find a space eater sometime else. Pick 57 for the New Orleans Saints. We ended up moving up, and that's why we have, and moving back, that's why we have so many selections, and I think this team needs it. We ended up getting Tetaro McMillan in round one, as well as Cameron Williams. Let's go after the edge at this point, and you got a really good selection here. And um, Jack Sawyer just feels like a type of guy that the New Orleans Saints would identify with, so to speak. Jack Sawyer brings a high level of effort, a high level of just overall consistency. And I honestly think this is very under, this is very overrated. I think he's been a much better run defender than people give him credit for. At pick number 58 for the Eagles, round one. What do we do round one for him? We went Cayman Rucker. Absolutely. I freaking love Cayman Rucker. Um, here in round number two, like, again, I've mentioned it a billion times, but tight end is just not worth it. My next best guy is Jake Brenningstool. And Jake has just been, he's not going to be selected in the second round. There's just no chance. Even as good as he is, I just don't really think that he would be a prime target in the second round. Uh, you technically could continue to address edge with maybe a more like beefier one that you could kick to the inside to replace Mel Williams, but you also have Thomas Booker and Moro Ajomo in there doing a great job. So this is where I could see them developing a top tier offensive tackle like Charles Grant. Can you imagine? I already know Charles Grant is going to be like one of the most fascinating players. He's 300 pounds. So he could end up being a guard in the short run, which I think is perfect if you don't want to re-sign Mekhi Becton. But he is 6'4". There's some concern there. But this dude's like one of the best athletes you've ever seen at the tackle position. And all of a sudden, like if you let Stout U, this is a Stout U type of player. I'd be pissed if Stoutland can't get his hands on a player like Charles Grant. The only other player I'd feel very happy about for uh, for you guys for the long run is Anthony Belton, which he is a little bit more close to uh, the Mackay Becton build. You know, Belton, Becton, just saying, but also he's like 6'6", 330. And he's an absolutely mean, he's a ferocious beast. Armand Membu needs to be tossed in this conversation as well. Um, bottom line is it looks like how he could be cooking up a trade here. Because I have some top tier edge rushing talent as well. The Steelers need to potentially look at, I mean, we could look at quarterback for the Steelers, but also corner for the long run. We could also end up looking at like, I don't think, I don't know why linebacker is an issue for the Steelers. I don't get that, but there are some positions that certainly the Steelers will be looking at running back as well. So are there any teams that are looking for a running back? I could see the Chiefs and the Eagles making some deals here because the Chiefs have a lot of draft capital too. Technically, Philly doesn't. So Philly could do a quick little swap with uh, KC for Kansas City to be able to jump a couple teams that are looking for a top tier running back because I don't think Kansas City needs too much more. I know this is going to piss off my KC fans, but you guys are not going to be losing out on draft capital. Like if you guys see... This is essentially going to be, um, it's going to be a base trade, essentially. I think that this will end up allowing Philadelphia to have a little bit extra flexibility here. And um, for this, I actually do think that we could end up, you know, pretty much shifting up and down the board. Feel free to mess around with that as much as you want. Maybe we end up doing like 166 and then like 206. But bottom line, not going to affect the mock draft too much. What I wanted to do is allow Philly to end up getting a little bit extra draft capital, a little more flexibility of vision. And now the Chiefs are sitting here. You could go after the offensive line at this point as well because the Steelers, I could also see technically the Saints trying to get a guard. And then 
I mean, I also know that the you actually it might be better to go for a guard than it is for a running back at this pick. And um, especially with the guys who are ahead of you, I'm actually going to say this is a great move to move up because I don't trust what the hell is going on in here for the interior offensive line. And we kind of need guys who can be flexible. And I'm going to go after Armand Membu here. I know we could go Donovan Jackson, but Armand Membu's a right tackle who's been doing a phenomenal job. And then he also could be a great right guard if you don't want to keep um, Trey Smith. So is it Trey? Why am I tripping balls? Uh, but regardless, your right guard. I know that I'm tripping, but it is going to be one of those days. But Armand Membu has been fantastic. And he's in Missouri, so can't say Missouri. Missouri. Uh, we got our tackle or tackle as well. Tackle slash guard as well as our tight end of the future. Pick number 59 for the Steelers. Um, Najee's been having a career year. I just don't think that's going to save him. And there's a lot of good backs in this class, but I also do see that a lot of them have been doing worse. And I'll say Amari and Hampton's been doing a fantastic job, a real fantastic job. He's been doing a very balanced performance as well, which is nice to see him as effective in both the pass and run game. I will say I kind of want to go after Caleb Johnson as the back for the Steelers in the third. It feels like a Steelers type of back. So if we were to ignore that issue, we went Isaiah Bond in the first, which I've had some pushback on that. Uh, we could go Garrett Nussmeyer here to get a developmental QB. Again, I, I like Nuss, but I really just want to pump the brakes on that. Like I think you guys do too. Edge, technically, we did end up trading for an edge to be in that rotation. I don't think that screams too much because we do have some injuries. That's the reason why. Uh, I do also want to mention corner here, though. Like for corner, let's see. Uh, Quincy, oh, I didn't realize Quincy Riley's right here. I did think, I do think his grade dropped slightly. But regardless, I think a lot of the cornerbacks that I graded ended up dropping a little bit. Damani Jackson dropped. Uh, we ended up drafting to Cario. Jason Marshall dropped a little bit as well based on his health. Um, but we do have Ephesians Prize Sock. He is a little bit of a limited athlete, but he is very smart in zone. He's very physical as well. Uh, I don't think that's going to be a pick 59. So let's trade out of here. Let's trade out of here. Pittsburgh, let's get the fuck out. We ended up trading way too much for Mike Williams as it is. So I think this is going to be a good opportunity to just pick up maybe a fourth round pick in a short range trade. Does any team need a safety potentially? DB takers. We have a team that ended up getting a lot of picks with the Houston Texans. Um, and they could jump the Bills for a top tier safety. Let's see. Let's test the waters out, right? Um, Texans, I mean, technically speaking, this is not bad. This is not bad at all for the team. So if you do 126, I think that's actually pretty requisite. Like, I think that will actually get enough value for the Steelers. I don't think the Texans are going to get much at pick 67, if I'm going to be blunt. So we're going to actually do that trade. The Steelers move back and the Texans move up to select their third second round pick. And you got excellent choices here. But I also know the choices will not be so excellent at the next spot. Um, it's going to be pretty much Kevin Winston, Lathan Ransom. And I really love Lathan Ransom. When healthy, I don't think there's a better safety in this class within 15 yards of the line of scrimmage or in the red zone. And I think he balances Pitchery and Bullock out very well to the point where I think that it's a home run hit. Pick number 60 for the Bills. I'm going to go after Kevin Winston, even though he's been hurt. Let's just not overthink this too much. Let's get our guy and let's roll. Um, this is part of the Marshawn Lattimore trade, a second and a third round pick. I fucking lied. It was a third and a fourth. I'm like, no, it wasn't a second and a third. I would have thought that was actually much more fair compensation, but we're back with the commanders. Uh, I already know you guys were screaming at me in the comments. I caught myself on that. I was like, man, something that doesn't feel right. But uh, in the first round, we ended up going after Luther Burden here. We need to go after an edge rusher at this point. Donovan Zirwaku is insane value. Same thing with Josiah Stewart. Josiah's had an incredible year, but Donovan's had a more balanced year overall because he's had like six stop games on top of nine pressures. So I'm going to be going after Donovan at Zirwaku. Leaving the Bills at 62, they got Kevin Winston in the first round. They went after JT Tui Molau. I think you could try to get a nifty receiver to pretty much play an Amari Cooper role if you don't want to bring him back. And I'm looking at Ty Felton here. And Ricky White's great as well, but Ty Felton in Maryland kind of used to those environments. So I really do like the role that he'll play. At 63 for the Detroit Lions, I almost want to buck the system and say I'm not going to go after offensive line. In the first round, we went after Shamar Stewart. Here, it's just so, it's impossible to say no to Donovan Jackson. We'll go after Donovan Jackson. I'll give it to you. At pick number 64, 
Uh, that would have been my dream pick, actually. I ended up mentioning Charles Grant, but Donovan Jackson in Stout U, that would have been good. But we missed out on it. It's okay. Um, looking at the other positions, though, and you could look at defensive interior. I just I can't see it. I just can't. I know Omar, Omar Norman Lott is a good option at this point as well. So we'll keep that in mind. But for the time being, we're going to keep this as is. Um, looking at the best option for Philly. I do think you could look at a guard to tackle transfer here. Jaden Roberts is kind of that ideal transfer. It's pretty much so the guys who I'm thinking about, Jaden Roberts, who has had a real tough time this year, if I'm going to be honest, he's had a tough time, but he is just so young and he's built to be a tackle too. Or we go after Belton or Grant. Those are the three. Belton's the guaranteed tackle. But I don't know, man. There's something special about Jaden Roberts, the power he has. He's literally the best. Everyone says he's the strongest guy in Alabama, like on their whole entire team. He is the weightlifting monster. I'm not going to let it slide. He's going to be the future right tackle of this team. And remember, you might say, hey, you know, we could, like, we've done a good job with Steen and Jurgens, and those guys aren't like really top tier, like top end picks, which technically Beef Jurgens was, I think, a second round pick. But, I digress. Um, you're trying to fill the shoes of Lane Johnson for the future. I love Fred Johnson, but Fred ain't going to be no Lane. And you need to be able to fill it. Take the ceiling pick with Jaden Roberts, who can play that guard role as well, sit behind Steen for a year, and then actually end up being able to maybe take over that role or even progress into a larger role. At pick 65 for the New England Patriots, we've taken left tackle and we've taken wide receiver. I'm going to be going after a top tier edge rusher here. We failed with our last edge that we traded away to uh, the Chiefs. We're not going to do that this time. We're going to get Josiah Stewart, who's been on a tear this year with an excellent 25% pass rush runway win rate. English is tough. Pick 66 for the Jaguars. Um, I actually think that wide receivers on the table here for this team, especially with the guys who are available. I honestly would love to see Ricky White end up playing in that um, in the same role that you have for Christian Kirk because Christian was supposed to be dealt at the trade deadline. I would not be too surprised if teams are uh, excited at the very minimum to try to test him out for the long run. We're going to go Ricky White here and just go full power to the offense. We got our tackle. We got our receiver. And then we also, on the other side, have a top-tier corner. At pick number 67 for the Steelers, we ended up moving back. And, um, you know, we already got our receiver, which is why I don't like going receiver in the first. Oh, I shouldn't listen to people. But I think this is the prime opportunity to be able to snipe a real quality player. And, man, I mean, let's look at the best player available. <laughs> um, we could end up going after offensive line. My best player available. Have we drafted anybody inside my top 25? Fuck Denzel Burke. He's not there anymore. Sebastian Castro. But that's already... <laughs> God damn. Um, <laughs> that's already been taken over by Beanie Bishop. Excuse me. But, you know, continuing on, the next best guy, Mitchell Evans, going to fall. Lack of all 22 tape. Jake Brenningstool not going to go after a tight end. You got Xavier Nwankpo, who's a real quality defensive back, but I just don't see it being the case. So... Like, just continuing down the board, you don't want to go after another wide receiver. Mason Graham's due for a massive bump. But, you know, we are kind of screwed in this situation. I do think there's one route that can be extremely successful, though. Amari Hampton's still on the board. Let's take him. He's been extremely productive this year, um, especially in our system. Just continue getting weapons, surrounding the quarterbacks, and then seeing what the hell happens. Uh, the Panthers at 68. We've traded up. We've traded back. We now have Alar as well as Abdul Carter. Let's continue looking at the receivers and, you know, looking at the best available and one that I think would be, you know what? We don't have a true enforcer. Liga is someone who I love to death, but I have yet to select Jaden Higgins to the squad. He is big, physical, top tier player on my board that is yet to be selected. I freaking love him to death. 6'4", 215, like just a quality quality wide receiver who is definitely due to move up once again at 69 for the Browns. We went after Milro and Genty. Let's get even more exciting in that receiving core. We're going to go on a little receiver run here. My number 39 player on my board, Ja'Cory Brooks, who is of course not listed. 
Oh, PFF, man, stop doing this to me. Uh, Devontae Ross is going to be the lucky recipient of the ADP boost, but it's my number 39 player, Ja'Cory Brooks, who's had a fantastic year there at Louisville. Has dealt with some drops, but I think I'm willing to look past it. The Vegas Raiders at 70. Uh, we've ended up going after quarterback. We've also ended up going after edge rusher, I believe, because Koontz is on the way out. Um, you could look at some extra help at corner, but to Cameron Richardson, someone who I have a lot of faith in, I'm going to go after linebacker here. Uh, linebackers ended up slipping a lot, but I'm actually going to go after the most athletic of the group, in my opinion, for the size. That's Deontay Lawson, linebacker out of Alabama. At 71 for the Giants, uh, we ended up moving up and ended up giving up our second round pick, but we ended up getting our quarterback in Cam Ward. I think that's the big one to address. I think right tackle is a position we also need to look at. Could look at Anthony Belton here, but let's just get someone who is consistent. And that's Blake Miller. I mean, he's just somebody who is, I, I think the whole entire Clemson system is kind of garbage for the most part. But um, Blake Miller is just that player who is a super high floor. And you just don't need to get flashy and sexy because that's what you tried to do last time. And there's enough sexiness with sexy Dexy. I'm going to go after Blake Miller here. At 72 for the Commanders, this is via that Jahan Dotson trade. Uh, we already went after Edge. We've gone after wide receiver. I think now is a proper time to also go after another quality linebacker because, well, Bobby Wagner is not going to be there forever. And you got Barrett Carter here, who I think is extremely uh, disrespected. I think that he just doesn't get the love he deserves. And I think this is a good spot for him to be. I pick number 73 for the Philadelphia Eagles. We got ourselves our quality offensive lineman. We got ourselves our quality edge rusher. I think now we could end up looking at some tight ends, but... Leave that for the fourth round, homie. Just leave it for the fourth. I'm going to look at linebackers, though. Technically, N'Kobe Dean, when he wore Kelly Green, with got a 90 defensive grade, but I think that the work is still... like You can't just say N'Kobe Dean's a success. He's been having his own respective struggles. Uh, Danny Stutzman's certainly in there, but Jahad Campbell is someone I really like. 6'3", 250, pretty much. I mean, super high floor. Uh, super high ceiling as well, but... You know, he ended up having some struggles mid-year, but he ended up bouncing back. And he's one of the main reasons why, like, this team has had at least some form of a formidable defense. And I personally like that. Like, you know, he's somebody who needs to improve in terms of full balance because he does have some games where he lets up a lot of yards. But uh, I think Jahad Campbell has been getting a ton of love and deserves to continue getting love as he ends up going to Philly. Pick number 74 for the Vegas Raiders. Uh, it started off with that linebacker trend. We've gone after quarterback. We've gone after linebacker. We've gone after edge rusher. And it's time to go after a receiver. So Trey Harris is here. I'm just going to select him. He's big. He's physical. Uh, fortunately, he's been hurt. But this dude's just been absolutely eating people alive at the college level. I think he's going to be a little bit worse of a pro. But that's why you get him at 74 and not at 14. Not saying you have 14, but I'm just saying that's where... Uh, production wise he should sit at 75 for the dallas cowboys we've gone after defensive interior and i kind of forgot what we did running back already with jonah coleman um i think this is the proper time to now be able to roll the dice on another receiver and you don't really have an after the catch threat come to think of it technically mingo is supposed to be that i don't trust it if i'm gonna be for real like i just don't i could say they could go a qb here but you just paid dak a shit ton of money don't think it's going to be the case. I'm trying to find a way to justify getting Sam Brown on this squad. This dude after the catch is just freaking bonkers. Like, I do think this guy is probably one of the best after the catch threats that you'll find. Same time, he's pretty much solely that. Um, other positions you can go. I do know that people want some extra edge rushing talent. I think that the reason your edge rushing is not too bueno right now is because all the dudes are not healthy. It's kind of a big deal. But you could try to get a developmental guard right now. You could get Charles Grant, try to develop him. I also do think that corner, this is not a bad spot to try to take advantage of guys who are kind of slipping. Um, you guys, based on how you ended up drafting, um, why am I forgetting his name? Kalen Carson. I think that you guys do value both physicality as well as zone IQ, which if I'm going to be real, that's exactly what I love about Ephesians Prysoc. He's not a great athlete, but he's physical, he's strong, and he's super smart. So we're going to use Tony Grimes as the placeholder for him, but he is my number 66 player on my board, Ephesians Prysock. 
At number 76, we have the Indianapolis Colts. And I think there's certainly room for a trade here because I still have some real quality players like Tate Ratledge that I love to death. And teams definitely need to get excited about moving up for him. Are there any teams that are looking for interior offensive line? I'm seeing one right here at the Ravens. Um, looking at what I've done for the Ravens so far, though, you got Quincy Riley. I think I went offensive line the first. LT Overton. No, I'm going to get balls to the wall with the Ravens. I need to continue boosting their line desperately. And um, so we're going to be making a move up here with the Colts, which I think based on the fact that you have all these picks, it's perfectly fine for us to be able to make a move like this. 12 spots, I think you could try to say 134 will do the do the trick. And there is a little bit of a gap there. I'm going to force it through. Baltimore moves up and they select the best guard left on the board. One of the best guards in the whole country, Tate Ratledge. Pick number 77 for the Bears. That's kind of the guy who I wanted to take for the Bears. Sorry, Bears fans. But we've gone after offensive tackle with Ursary. We've gone after wide receiver with Emeka Abuka, and now we're sitting here at 77, and I think this is the prime opportunity to go after a developmental safety to replace Kevin Byard in the future, and that's key on Saab to a T. At number 78 for the Seahawks, a team that I ended up drafting one of my favorite safeties in the draft, in the neck even worry for we've gotten even worry we've also gotten josh simmons i think that's a great spot to be in let's get the best high ceiling linebacker possible because this team really values them and um i mean you could talk about a lot of these players eric gentry also said he's red shirting don't know why he's included but danny stutzman has just been doing an excellent job in terms of run defense this year i'm not saying that because he has a 90 grade but he's been getting a ton of defensive stops this year and he's been very consistent week in and week out. You traded a fourth for Ernest, um, and I think Ernest Jones is a stud. I think he's going to be there for the long haul. Tyrese Knight is someone who I don't really trust for the long-term vision of the team outside of being a thumper, which, to be fair, you know, now that I say it, that is kind of what I just said was a strength of Danny Stutzman. I'm going to pull back. And um, you know what? We can get Emery Jones to play guard for this team. Or... We can get developmental QB and Garrett Nussmeyer. He slipped, but I honestly don't think that's out of the blue. Garrett Nussmeyer would actually be a really good developmental QB. You guys are trying it right now with Sam Howell. That's a good one. He slipped, but it's, you know, it's a worthy slip. People think that, you know, he's a lock, but he's not. Speaking of a team that could take a QB, the reason why I also really wanted it for the Seahawks, the Rams are going to go after a QB as well. However, do they seriously not have him in here? What the hell, man? Will Howard. Will Howard's going to be the selection. Uh, this is ridiculous. I'm just going to be for real right now. This is this is actually ridiculous that PFF doesn't have Will Howard as um, an option here. So Will Howard, where's he at on my board? I'm tripping. Drew Lars at 55, which means he's the next QB. Um, he's number 83 on my board. So Will Howard, quarterback out of the Ohio State University, not Donovan Smith. Again, just want to keep that very, very, very crystal clear. Pick number 80 for the Buccaneers. Went after Edge. Went after, what do we do in the second round? Now I'm tripping. Uh, went after Takario Davis, flexible defensive back. This is where I feel comfortable about pressing uh, Jake Brenningstool into the equation. He added 10 pounds. He's an elite route runner. I think that he's getting majorly disrespected. And as time goes on, I think he's going to continue gaining more and more respect. Uh, Colts, we're going to be going after linebacker here. And this is where I think Danny Stutzman is going to be perfectly fine. High quality run defender. Don't really overthink it. But so far for the Colts, we've ended up going uh, Princely Umami Ellen as well in the first. I know we traded back and ended up getting Azariah Thomas. So really good group there of defenders. We might need to focus on offense with that next pick. But at 82 for the Chicago Bears, we went Keon Saab. Again, this is part of that trade back. Um, I'm going to be looking also at a potential center here. And I think you guys will agree center is a big need. And I love Parker Brailsford. I mean, this dude is an absolute beast. He was actually got multiple offers for being a wrestling champion. And I think this is going to be a massive upgrade to that line. At 83 for the Broncos, uh, we went after tight end already. In the second round, uh, we went after a wide receiver. Let's look at offensive tackle as well. And I actually really like Anthony Belton here or Holland Pierce. Holland Pierce has been a quality left tackle. And at 6'8", 344, I think it's kind of hard to say no. He's been He's gone up against some quality edge rushing teams and has done an excellent job. We're going to roll the dice and go after a unique player here in Holland Pierce. At 84 for the Arizona Cardinals, 
Again, a team I don't like to draft for. I'm actually going to get a pure linebacker at this point because it's worth taking the high floor of some of these players. Like Jack Kaiser, who's been very reliable, not necessarily sexy, but certainly quality. At pick number 85, I'm going to double check because um, I ended up we ended up moving back and ended up selecting, selecting TJ, right? Yeah, TJ Sanders. So we get an actual pure linebacker here, edge rusher in uh, Jalen Walker. 85, though, for the Chargers. We went after tight end. We went after running back. And now we can actually go after defensive interior. I'm looking at Aeneas Peebles here, and it's unbelievable to me. This dude's pass rush win rate, this is going to be essentially your uh, Mason Graham on the defensive front. Uh, speaking of a team that I could look at going defensive interior, this was the Matt Judon trade. We've gone after edge rusher for the Patriots. We've gone after receiver. We've gone after tackle. I think those are the big positions to hit. Um, at this point, you might want to go after another receiver, but I honestly don't think a backup running back is out of the question. I know the running back crew is solid. Don't get me wrong. Like it's solid, but when you can end up getting RJ Harvey has been a baller this year, by the way, he's done a fantastic job, but I'm looking at Caleb Johnson here. Um, where the hell are the rest of the dudes who I really love? Actually, Cam Scadabo is a beast too. Uh, honestly, this is pretty like Kyle Manung guy. I'm not really a huge fan of the list. I feel like they're missing some guys here. I do think a boundary corner, like Denzel Burke, you ended up in when I remember, um, what was his name? I'm tripping on the Ohio State corner that had once really good hype and ended up going to the squad. It's like a slot corner from the Ravens. Um, forgetting his name, but another Ohio State corner. I actually still have a ton of ton of faith in the future of Denzel Burke. At 86, that might be roll, worth rolling the dice on, especially in this corner class. At pick 87 for the Green Bay Packers. Uh, have we drafted corner yet for Green Bay? We have not. We went after Jonas Savania, as well as, uh, I think, Mikel Williams. We're going to go Max Harrison here. We ended up getting a good corner in Valentine a couple years ago. We're going to go back to Kentucky and get a quality corner in Max Harrison. At 88 for the Indianapolis Colts, let's look on the offensive side here. Uh, could get a quality backup quarterback at this point. Like, this could be where you get a Carson back to be, or a Quinn Ewers to develop. Like, I think that could be worth it. But you don't need that necessarily. I do think that getting a quality backup tight end, this might be worth it. And Terrence Ferguson's been really quality at 2.26 yards per route run in Oregon's offense. I think that's pretty good. I, I personally like the fact that he's been consistent. People love him, and he has a good size as well. Certainly someone that you can end up putting behind Jelani Woods if, well, I think the issue is more that Jelani's not healthy than anything. At 89 for the New Orleans Saints, I actually love the idea of going after some more developmental safety talents for the squad, especially one like Dante Trader that could learn from Honey Badger for the future. Let me know what you guys think about that. At 90 for the Kansas City Chiefs, who... Have we drafted running back for him yet? I remember we did this deal with Philly. Uh, we ended up moving up and got Membu. We ended up moving back. Was this the pick with Philly? We did. So we got Membu. Um, this is probably the best spot to get someone like from Rutgers, Kyle Manungai. It worked once. Let's see if it works again. Uh, 91 for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I ended up mentioning earlier, Caleb Johnson's here. Uh, so far, we ended up going, oh, we went Omari and Hampton already. Bollocks. I got all excited for Caleb Johnson. But... I mean, we've got two quality weapons here, and I do worry that our tackle situation is kind of dire. Issue is, man, just not in a good spot. Not in a good spot for an offensive tackle in this draft. So I do think we can look at the potential of a boundary corner. Again, Ben Morrison, if you guys did not listen to the start of the video, is not coming out in this. Mansoor Delane has had horrific games, but he's also had like jaw-dropping games. It's a very weird combo. Uh, and that's somebody that you could try to develop. Like, again, I'm not sounding very convincing here, am I? I, I? I don't think so. Like, we could try to get some extra defensive depth. And to be fair, defensive interior at this point, you look at someone like Dante Corleone, Shamar Turner. Shamar Turner, we're not going back to Texas A&M for those guys. But Howard Cross, Howard Cross is a baller. He's had a little bit of a down year, so he probably could end up returning. I think he's a true junior, is he not? He's a graduate? Oh, shit. He's old. <laughs> I didn't know he was an actual graduate. Um, could look at that safety class as well to get some extra depth. And to be fair, I'm kind of a sucker for Xavier Nwankpa. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get some extra safety depth on the squad who has super high ceiling. I'm a sucker for Xavier who also has that linebacker potential if you want to have him in on certain packages as a sub-linebacker. 
You got the Jaguars. We've drafted pretty much everything I've ever wanted for them. Let's continue drafting offensive line for them, though. And, um, you know, there's a player who I really, really want here. It's Charles Grant. Sexy, super athletic lineman. Granted, you now have two uh, six foot four tackles that you drafted, but I really love Charles Grant's athleticism and how it can really con contribute to the team. For the New Orleans Saints, I'm going to be looking at a guard here and why not just go down the street and draft Emory Jones? Why not? I mean, he sucked as a right tackle. Nine pressures allowed in a game just simply disqualifies you, but it's worth it at this point. Speaking of tackles, we're continuing the trend. Cleveland Browns, we're going to be going after a left tackle here in Anthony Belton because, again, why not? The Detroit Lions, we went after Donovan Jackson already as well as um, Shamar Stewart. So, at this point, I actually like the idea of going after my second best center in the class and Jake Slaughter to be the understudy of Frank Ragnow, especially with all the injury potential there. I think it's going to be quality to just continue making a strength a strength and continue investing in the offensive line. Kansas City Chiefs, we drafted a running back, tackle, tight end. Let's look at the edge corks. You ended up drafting one, and I think Landon Jackson, size-wise, is perfect for Spag, even though you went after Uche. I still think that that's going to bring especially for the value, excellent potential. At 97 for the Minnesota Vikings, talked about going after interior offensive line. We've kind of eviscerated a lot of the options here, but I still think guys like Xavier Truss definitely are worth the pick. So you were in a good spot. We're in a very good spot here. Because even though it's like, again, not super sexy, there's also a player I do want to mention here. Where the hell do I have him? Darius Washington out of Florida State. Sucks as a tackle, but he's actually really well built as a center slash guard prospect. Um, I'm not going to do that because this team doesn't need really a center prospect at the moment. I'm going to go ex after Xavier Truss. I know that he's six, seven, but he's really flexible, extremely athletic, and actually a really damn good guard at pick 98 for the Miami dolphins. Um, let's get some extra defensive back help in here. I love the flexibility of Sebastian Castro. Uh, he's one of my top players in the entire class and he just slipped because he's probably going to be a slot guy, but it's just, it's too good to pass on at this point. I love him to death. At pick number 99, though, for the Miami Dolphins, let's continue investing in the offensive line. We already got Wyatt Milam. And um, to be fair, I think that's pretty requisite. We've got defensive tier. We've got an offensive line. And um, I do think we could actually look as somebody right down the road in Sam Brown, who's great after the catch, would work very well in this system. Pick 100 for the Los Angeles Rams. We ended up going after corner. We went after, went, we went after quarterback. And now I actually really like the idea of Brandon Crenshaw Dixon here. He's been doing a fairly solid job this year. Actually, no, I take that back. Austin Barber, he's actually the pairing to Brandon Crenshaw Dixon has actually been one of the best tackles in the NFL or excuse me, in college. So I'm actually going to take them. I'm going to take him here. So it's not Brandon Crenshaw Dixon. It's going to be Austin Barber, the left tackle. Pick number 101 and ending off this draft. We do have the 49ers here, and you got like Quinn Ewers and Carson Beck on the board. Uh, I think a team should make a small move up for Quinn. And like, are there any teams that could be trying to get in the mix here? Like, you could try the Cleveland Browns and have that two QB system. Honestly, that wouldn't be a horrible idea. But I think the Colts certainly would be the team that could just end up, you know, essentially feasting on a little bit of misfortune. Well, their own misfortune for that matter. And giving the Niners back their pick would be hilarious. So we're going to be doing that. And um, the Colts end up selecting another backup from Texas to be able to play on their squad in Quinn Ewers. I earned a point. Let's go. Uh, but that's going to be the video. I'm tired. You're tired. Let's enjoy the rest of the night. I love you. See you on the far side. Peace.